All right, we're, uh, we're last week we talked, the, the title of the sermon was Words Speak Life, Speak Death, and there wasn't a part to it, but the, today's the same title, only it's part two, and last week uh, we spoke about words that speak life. So what would you think about today might be? Oh boy, yeah. So Proverbs uh, in the message is where this kind of comes from. Uh, words kill, words give life. They're either poison fruit, poison or fruit, you choose. And uh, again, wow. Uh, that's just in your face kind of scripture right there, isn't it? Uh, yeah, words are powerful. And last week we talked about speaking life and especially the idea that the words you hear give you life, especially if you're listening to God and how God can give you an instructed tongue. That's what it says in Isaiah 50 verse 4. He can give you a tongue that is prepared to give words that sustain the weary. That's, that's what the song we just sang was about. Words that sustain the weary. Words that can change a person's day. They can change a person's life. Words that can build up is what it says in Ephesians 4. Words that build up. And so that's what we focused on last week. So today... We're not. <laughs> We're going to talk about words that kill. I mean, that's such a word. Kill is such a word. It, isn't it just kill? I mean, it, it grips you in a, in a certain way. And so that's where we're going to go. Because I think that scripture has some instruction for us about our mouths and, and the great gift that God gave us when he gave us the ability to speak. And yet that with that ability comes this huge responsibility. How are we going to use this great tool? So the next verse we looked at was Ephesians 4, uh, 29. And it starts out like this. All of Ephesians 4 is talking about new life. It's talking about this is how you live when you become a follower of Jesus. That's what we've already had 28 verses up to here about that, about how do you live when you become a follower of Jesus. And one of the things is you don't let any corrupt or the NIV says unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up. That's what our mouth is for, building others up according to their needs that it would benefit those who listen. So the words I'm speaking this morning, I only should say them if this is going to happen. It's going to build you up. It's going to be according to your needs. And as I was doing this, an assessment of your needs, I decided that you need to hear a sermon about words that kill. Ah, this is supposed to be kind of a joke there. You know, joking is dangerous. <laughs> have, you all not, have you all experienced that in your life? Because I have a lot, because I tr go for it a lot, and then it just doesn't work out. But uh, I want to go back to the other part. We'll, we'll come to this again. Uh, so it says, don't let any corrupt talk. The NIV says, uh, unwholesome. The word interesting, because I wanted to, what, is it, what does it mean in Greek? Well, it's a Greek word that is way, 90% of the time it's used in both Greek, not outside the Bible, but also in the New Testament. It, it means it's talking about rotten fruit. It's almost always, and so rotten is really what it is, is rotten. Don't let any rotten, poi yeah, 
Peterson in the message says poison, but don't let any rotten food, food or words come out, out of your mouth. Uh, don't let any rotten food come out of your mouth either, probably. So, uh, yeah. So here, here's what I want to, before I, we talk about words that kill, I want to talk a little bit about the Bible, period. And uh, here, here's what I want us to think about before I talk about words that kill, is the Bible has a couple of different, there are lots of different kinds of uh, literature in the Bible. Uh, there's narrative, there's poems, uh, there's in- lists of instructions. But, but what I want to get a, start out with this morning is the idea that what is it, what's the message of the Bible? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it in two categories. You can break it up a lot of different kinds of ways, but I want you to think about this way of kind of categorizing what the Bible is presenting to us. Uh, the truth, the Word of God. Uh, but it, it comes in two ways. One is, I want to say first and most important, is it, it gives us truth about identity and about relationship. It, it's about who God is, the Bible, as you're reading, it's about who God is and it's about who we are and it's about the relationship that we have, Okay. That's part of the Bible. Then, that's first, identity relationship. Then when you kind of get that part, who God is, like for instance, why is this dude giving us instructions? Well, because he's the creator, sovereign Lord, you know? That's why I need to know who God is before I'm ready to listen to his instructions. And who I am, I'm his son, who he loves, and if I don't hear the instructions that are in the Bible through that filter, through that introduction, I can misuse the instructions. That happens all the time in the Bible itself, where the instructions of the Bible are used to hurt people. That's not that you don't get that if you understand that this is a creator God who loves us. And I am his child who he loves so much. He sent his, I've got to get that first so I will be ready to hear the instructions. When I know that a person who's giving me some, I'm going to call it tough love truth. You know what I'm talking about there? Like son, (laughs) when I know that person loves me and has nothing but my interest in heart, I'm willing to listen. Does that make sense? I don't feel put down when I hear a hard word. Because sometimes I I needed a hard word. Sometimes it's not even a hard word. It's just a a little bit of instruction like, uh, Bob, you might want to check your nose there. There's something hanging out of it. You know, I mean, sometimes you need that kind of help, don't you? I mean... Maybe you never have, but I have. And, and it bothers me after I've been around quite a few people, then I have to notice for myself. There was something hanging out my nose the whole time, and nobody said a thing. I don't, uh, you know, and they call themselves friends. <laughs> but, but who you're listening to and you're, the relationship with the person who you're hearing the instructions from matters and first and and also that God is right he doesn't give wrong instructions I've had friends and people who loved me who they wanted to tell me good stuff but sometimes they didn't because they didn't know they were wrong does that you know you this you see where we're coming from here today so God loves us He wants what's best for us. We have failed. He's forgiven us. He keeps on forgiving us. And he keeps on giving us good instruction, good food. And so then he gives us instructions. And the instructions only come, I'll put it this way. 
Sanctification, me becoming holy, only comes after I've been saved. Yeah, okay, you with me there? God's grace comes first. Then he says, now that you're one of my children, now that I've redeemed you, now that I've paid the price to rescue you, now then, walk this out, and this is some good advice instructions, not just advice. Because you know advice is sometimes, yeah, I think I'll do that, think I won't. But this is more, no, this is instruction. This is the way to do it. And if you don't do it this way, you're going to come up with lousy life results. I'm still going to love you. God's still going to love you. But you're going to come up with lousy life results. And this happens a lot when it comes to the tongue. And so now we're going to move a little bit further into this instructions of the day. Well, no, we need to, this, what this is telling me is that maybe I need to tell more about instruction. No, again, that joke didn't work either. One of the things that uh, I was very interested in this spring was the Wednesday night Bible class. And uh, w one of the reasons is just the title of the book they studied, okay? And what was it, Jenny? The, the book was Keep It Shut, right? Was it? Yeah, well, you know, sometimes you have a hard time saying it, so Danny got... Here's the, here's, the, here's the title of the Keep It Shut. Well, this fits so well with another thing I'm going to say in a minute, but the, the idea of the problem with the tongue is sometimes it's a lethal weapon, what I'm calling a lethal weapon. Yes, it can be a weapon, and it can be a tool for healing. It can be either one. How you use it, is what matters. And so as we're thinking about this, that's what it says in you know, Proverbs. It's either poison or fruit. You choose. It's a weapon. And how many of you have been wounded by the weapon of someone else's mouth? Yeah. How many of you have wounded somebody by your own mouth? You know this is true. And yet how many of you have received healing but from someone else's mouth. And how many of you have tried at least, or, or perhaps been successful at, at healing another wound that a person has because of the words that God gave you to say out of your own mouth? So this is what their uh, Bible study was about. And so I was talking about how to kind of bring some of that Bible study here. And one of the things that, one of the members was Amanda. So we, I've asked, asked Amanda, Cindy asked for me, and Amanda sent a video uh, and a little summary of some of the things they studied. And so we're going to listen next. Amanda Johnson's going to speak for us, and uh, then I'll keep going with some other stuff about bad tongue. Hello, CCC family. As you may or may not know, we ladies just finished a study called Keep It Shut, What to Say, How to Say It, and When to Say Nothing at All by Carol Amen. The title alone says it all, but there are a few personal takeaways. Overall, this study is about the words that we say and how we say or use them. Carol Amen gives us some great examples and discusses some best practices for checking our tongues and or keeping our lips sealed. Our words can be like fire, or they can be sarcastic, snappy, snippy, sassy, hurtful, or helpful, gibberish, or meaningful. What are the motives behind our words? Um, and do we use good banners and, in our speech? And what are the limits or the boundaries that we should observe? Who, what, where, when, why, and how we should share our thoughts? I was reminded of a few songs and movies, and I wonder how influential some pop
popular songs and singers can be, even on a subconscious level. Lesson one discusses the influences of our words, and that's something I teach a lot and mostly live by. There is a time and a place for things that we say, and depending on my audience is how much I'll pray before I open my mouth or even if I need to open my mouth or should open my mouth which is again discussed throughout the book, but greatly in lesson five, which discusses aims, motives, and blind spots. Where do I justify, explain, uh, offer excuses, etc.? Is what I'm about to say true? Will it hurt or help the person or the situation? Will it bring a solution or just cause more problems? Is my aim to make me look good? Uh, if it's about someone, would I say it to their face? And if the roles were reversed, would I want those same things said to me? Lesson five also discusses slyness, which can be kind of tricky. So the slyness of our words, um, by so we're not being straightforward. But I've known a few people who they say that they're straightforward, but then they give vague answers. And when you give vague answers, you're leaving the hearer to wonder or assume the person's truth. Um, I'm guilty of that. And my justification, ooh, a blind spot, is I don't want to influence that person's ultimate decision. I want them to make up their own mind. And so that's where the trickiness comes in. And it's also related to gossip and hearsay, which is discussed in uh, lesson seven, where motivation is again broached, but with a caveat. There can be an innocent component in gossip. Sometimes we should keep things general, recognizing and using a need to know basis, discretion. One particular point made was about prayer requests. Sometimes we might disclose information that isn't necessary and could potentially be embarrassing. What if your prayer warriors were to ever meet this person and say, oh, you're the one with insert detailed prayer here. So maybe asking for Miss Lady Ma'am's specific issue doesn't need to be fully disclosed. We should internally question how much that person would want shared. How private is this person? How well does the person or the people I'm talking to know this person? And are they ever going to meet? There really are so many great takeaways in this study, even if some are just reminders. And I learned some additional extra measures that I can use. My addition to you, though, is don't forget yourself. Speak life to you too, to your life, to your inner child, to your inner sinner self, to your broken self, to your hurting self. Lift yourself up too. Love you all and blessings to you all. Thank you, Amanda. Uh, there was more and more and more. Obviously, this study took weeks, but this is just a, a little taste of what... Uh, they did, and I, I'm putting this under the category of examples of the tongue as a weapon of destruction, but I'm going to give a few uh, for sure. One is uh, anything that comes out that doesn't build someone else up, and that doesn't necessarily always mean make their feel good. Sometimes we hear true things that we need to hear. And it, on first hearing it, it's not welcome. Let me give you an example. I remember the day my mom sat me down from across the table and she said words I needed to hear for her sake and mine. She, need, she needed to say, Bob, I'm done. I'm going to die and I'm not going to take any more of my medicines and I'm not going to go to the doctor. So it's going to be about two weeks probably. And it was, and these words did not make me feel good, but I needed to hear that from her mouth and in the relationship there was a bond that was already incredible that was made just closer. 
And I loved mom in that moment. But it didn't feel good. Yeah. Uh, I remember when the doctor told me about my arthritis and I asked him, is there anything that can be done? He said, no, the only thing that can be done is you're going to die. I said, well, thanks, doc. <laughs> and I've learned to live with my arthritis, you know, and uh, without having to just pile down uh, painkillers. It's, it's okay. Sometimes this is... The truth is not destroying us, but it doesn't always, always feel good. But there are some things that I want to point out that Scripture points out about, about examples. And, and one has is lies. Telling the truth is step number one on the idea, are you going to keep your mouth shut? Is this the time to keep your mouth shut? Well, if you're not going to tell the truth, yes. And yet sometimes, man, I am so tempted to tell like, okay, this is mostly true. Have you ever told mostly true things? Uh, especially if I'm asked by my wife, where have I been and how, what was I doing? And, you know, well, I was just kind of goofing around with the guys. That, but didn't you know that we had, yeah, I need to tell the truth or keep my mouth shut. Here, here's one thing I, I got to tell you a pet peeve of mine and I try to stay off of pet peeves when it's coming out of the preacher's mouth. But <clears throat> you know how there's certain words or phrases that become popular over time and then they kind of fade out. Like I used to call stuff groovy. <laughs> yeah. It's so funny. So, who said wow back there? Was that you, Jenny? Okay, I just heard somebody said, wow, like, man, that dude is, oh, there you go. Thanks, Leanne. I used to say that. Well, and phrases come and phrases go, but there's a phrase that's popular, really popular right now. And it didn't, it wasn't said when I was younger, uh, growing up, and it is adding the words, the two words, I promise onto anything somebody says they're going to do. I promise. Like, I'm going to preach today. I promise. I'll pick you up on time. I promise. I promise. You, you'll hear it on television, but you'll hear it out of people say, I, I promise. After they've said something they're going to do, I'll bring the coffee. I promise. It'll be good. You'll like it. I promise. And it just hits me in the face where I think about Jesus said, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Because here's the thing. Some, I think we're in a culture of deception and half-truths. And so people are, they need assurance that you're really going to do what you say you're going to do. And you want to assure them. So you add on the words, I promise. I, and I promise this to you too. See what I did there? <laughs> You're going to notice this much more in the next week. You're going to hear the word, the phrase, I promise, a lot. <laughs> but let your let yes be yes and your no be no is Jesus' sermon on the mount. This is where to begin. Say true things. Uh, don't fool people about what you're going to do. But here's another couple of things. One is, uh, the idea of slander, besides lying, this idea of slander. And Colossians 3 gives kind of a list about things that the tongue does. And, and slander is this, and it's so common. Uh, it's intentionally destroying, using words to destroy or at least damage someone else's character or, or reputation. And this is so such a common thing in our culture. And perhaps it always was. I mean, it was a problem to the Colossians or Paul wouldn't have written to them. It, I don't need to write to you about that because, you know, nobody in Colossae in the first century ever slandered. So obviously it always been a problem. But there's some kind of, I don't know, feeling of power a person gets or feeling like in the know. Same, it's going to come to gossip in a minute. But slander is having an intentional, I'm, I'm going to hurt this other person. 
I'm going to hurt their status. I want them to be thought of as less. And perhaps that's why I'm doing it, because I want me or the person I'm trying to lift up, I'll, I'll lift up another person by bringing down another one. Does that, has that ever happened? I mean, I see it in my, I saw it in, in kids, you know, I see it in football players that I coach. They would, they would talk bad about, well, at least I didn't. And they'll start talking bad about someone else to kind of protect or lift themselves up. But it, it happens where you're telling things for the intentional purpose of, of hurting them. Uh, and this happens, it's connected to gossip. Gossip and slander are not exactly the same thing, but they're pretty close. And, you know, gossip is uh, attractive because you like to know what's going on. And you like to tell someone that you know, you, both hearing gossip and telling gossip, kind of a, on the same level uh, in terms of why you do it, because I want to know. And I don't want to be the one who doesn't know. Have you ever been like, something's going on in your family and you're the last person to know? And that kind of bugs me. But that's the way it was most of the time in my family because my three sisters and mom, they'd talk. Because it's girl stuff. But I didn't know. Stuff going on, I don't know what time we're supposed to be there. How am I supposed to know? Nobody told me. Well, we all talked about it. Well, that's the difference between you all talking about it and telling me. Yeah, so I'm late. But more than that is people like to know. And they like to know that, they like other people to know that they know. And plus, it's a good, there's sometimes really interesting stories that you get to know when you gossip. Problem with gossip is it hurts people. And not only it hurts people, God does like it. And God, as a matter of fact, in Romans 1, it, being a gossip is in the same list with being a murderer. It's in the same list as being a, a God hater. And, and, and gossip, and especially when it's connected with slander, well, it happens like this. And, and what, So what do you do about it? I'm going to go ahead and get to that right now in this case. Uh, I had a, well, you don't do it. You keep your mouth shut, you know. And if there's a gossip going on, what do you, how do you stop it? Well, you walk off is one way and keep your mouth shut. Keeping your mouth shut is, a, is your, my go-to about how to deal with a, a mouth that's out of control or that you feel is being tempted, keep your mouth shut, don't talk. But, but I had this story, and this happened uh, about almost 10 years ago. And uh, <laughs> I was divorced, I was recently divorced. And uh, there was a lot of, you know, speculation goes around. And you can see gossip circles. And, and you know, where I would ever see them is, you know, church. Uh, and uh, they're, everybody's wondering, rather than talk to me about it, they'd rather talk to each other and say, I wonder what happened. Uh, you know, that's the curiosity question. Well, a friend of mine who lives in Dallas, uh, he, he, I got a call out of nowhere from him. And I've been divorced at this point for two years. And uh, the friend, he called me and said, Bob, I'm sitting here at the table with, and he tells me the guy's name. And he's sitting at a restaurant at the table. And he just told me that he heard that you were having an affair with this person. And I wanted to know if that's true. Boom. That's one way to stop gossip <laughs> about person. And I said no, and then I told this kind of story how it could maybe seem that. I had friends that were women, which I've given up friends, friendship with women. They're just too complicated. But the, the, the thing about sometimes gossip, Sometimes it needs to be addressed. This is gossip. We should stop talking. It needs to be addressed. Sometimes it just needs to be avoided. 
I know if I go and I begin to talk with these people, they're going to talk about this and I need to keep my mouth shut. But gossip is something that's not ever good. It's never good. And it leads, can lead to what's even worse is when it becomes intentional and, and slander is involved. Another thing that, that happens, we, we have several instructions about not, not, not judging other people. You know, when judgment happens, it starts in the mind. So same with most of the things we say out of our mouth. Now, sometimes some people honestly will say things that before they've even thought about it. Uh, but, but when you're judgmental, what judgmental does, it's, it starts here, but then when it comes out of your mouth, that's when thoughts become action. Those are actionable words when I begin to judge in a condemning kind of way the actions of another person. Again, which Jesus teaches us, don't judge you got a log in your own eye. Get it out. Stop talking. Stop talking judgmental in judgmental ways. I want to move ahead here and just, just come to the realization that there's more to this than I'm going to say today. Come back next week. But I want to talk about harnessing the power of the tongue. And one of the things I have, because this is my dad's version of uh, y'all's book, Jenny, uh, it was this. It's KMS, keep mouth shut. And I carry a card. Dad has cards to hand out for you to carry, KMS. And I keep it in my money clip. And I especially use it, I'll tell you, when, uh, well, I'll get to this in a minute, but it's backed up by scripture, of course. Be slow to James talks about a lot about the tongue. And he starts out in chapter one, he talks about be slow to speak, slow to speak, quick to listen. You know, you don't speak rotten, you know, rotten words, unwhol unwholesome words. You don't speak rotten words when you're listening. Oh, as a matter of fact, you don't even speak words when you're listening. That's good. Be a listener. Quick, slow to speak, quick to listen, James says. And especially this, I'm listening to seek understanding. Because one of the most important things when our mouth gets to being a weapon is because I'm not understanding the other person or the situation. I'm lacking understanding. I need to be slow to speak. And so first of all, KMS, keep your mouth shut. The second thing about harnessing the power of the tongue, practice saying kind words. Practice, be intentional about saying kind words. You know, there's some things you can say and you can say the same content, but in a using different words vocabulary and one comes up offensive and one comes up building up you know what I mean it's how you say some things which I really liked about your book Jenny uh, uh, the idea that part of our issue is how do I say the truth I want to say the truth but I need to say it in a way that is building up doesn't mean sugarcoating it means telling the truth but telling it in a way that builds up and a lot of that has to do with other words that come out of our mouth that come out in the form of questions. Asking questions so I can understand. So I'm an active listener. And then practicing kind words. And then here's another. Be aware of your feelings. Man, have you been in a conversation where you felt all of a sudden your feelings start to get on, kind of worked up? And all of a sudden, what was a conversation becomes an argument. And in this point, there's a point where, again, if I can reach into my pocket and feel my money clip, I'll know, hmm, keep your mouth shut. And sometimes it's about the topic. 
Somebody's going to bring up a topic. I know where this is headed. Have you ever been in that conversation? I know where this is headed and it's not a good place. So how do I get out of that conversation kindly? And yet sometimes maybe I just don't feel comfortable to be able to say, I don't feel comfortable discussing this. I'm not trying to be a bad person or a bad friend, but really, let's talk about something else. Not a bad way to go. But finally, I want to get to this. So what else? Uh, pray for forgiveness, pray for insight, and pray for boldness in these three ways. I want to ask God. I want to spend some time asking God to reveal to me ways in that I have used corrupt words or unwholesome language. Because sometimes I, I know this happens. I've said things that are offensive. I didn't even know it. I didn't, I didn't know. And I want to ask God, reveal to me when I am hurting someone else, I'm tearing down, not building up. Reveal that to me. Show it to me because I have a blind spot. Again, back to the book. Blind spot. I don't know I'm talking trash. And, and I've had this conversation with a certain friend of mine, and it wasn't. But now then, if I'm speaking the same thing to this other person, it is. Does that make sense? Ask God to reveal and then forgive me of the times where I've used corrupt words. Words that tear down. And then I'm praying for insight. Praying for insight First of all, what needs to be said? If it doesn't need to be said, I don't need to say it. But also, if it needs to be said, how, God, I'm praying for insight. Give me the words to say it well. Give me an instructed tongue. And, and then this boldness, and I say insight here too, to speak the truth even when it's uncomfortable. The goal isn't always to make ourselves comfortable. Sometimes building up means making someone uncomfortable. And I want to be also the person who is willing to hear somebody say something that's building me up, but it's uncomfortable. This is the way, as a football coach, some guys, the only thing they wanted to hear from me, their coach, was Good job. Even if they did a bad job, they still want to hear, oh, you're good. Let me give you the uh, participation ribbon, but we know we're getting the tar beat out of us. But I had a few guys who would come and say, coach, tell me what I'm doing wrong because I want to get better. That's the attitude I want to have as a listener. Hey, if I'm messing up, if I'm preaching too long, go ahead. Start putting your guitars on. I'll know it's time to eat lunch. But, but, but sometimes I need a word of correction or of it just, I have a blind spot. And so I want to ask God for boldness to be able to listen and then boldness to be able to also speak. But here's the thing. We, man, we live in, I guess perhaps always this was, we live in a world of misinformation. Amen? And what I don't want to be guilty of is spreading it. I don't want to do that. And so I'm praying for boldness to seek the truth, to find out what is really true. And I don't want to pass on... I, I, Dad doesn't listen to these, does he? Sometimes dad misunderstands what he hears on TV and tells it as if it is exactly the truth. And that's happened quite a bit recently. But I don't want to be, I, I want to, I don't, I want to find the truth before I say something. I don't want to say something that I'm repeating that I've heard from somebody that I, it's not true. It's not true. And, and so I'm praying for God.
for forgiveness and insight and boldness. We're going to sing this song. Uh, Thank you for the blood. Because again, the instructions we get come after we understand our position with God, which is, I'm a beloved son of God who have made tons of mistakes and sometimes intentional mistakes about with my mouth. And I was a wretch. That's who I was. I love to hurt people with words. You know why? I was good at that could do it and so thank you Jesus for forgiving me for this for hurting people and, and give me the courage and insight if I need to make something right I need to ask for forgiveness of someone I've hurt with my words and so as I sing this song I want to just thank God for his mercy for our loose lips, our, our mouths that have hurt others. And at the same time, thank him for the blessing that we have because we can speak words of life into other people's lives and into our own. So we're going to sing and then I'll have a, another word at the end. I'd like to close us today in a prayer. Let's pray together. God, I pray today that you would give us a good word from your heart to ours. That we would hear you call us sons and daughters. God, I pray that you would bless us with the instructed tongue. That we would also give that same message to others. That the world would know. That the world would know that they... We are your beloved children. You have a plan for us and it's good. And we could share that in every way we can. We want to be your sons and your daughters, but also your ambassadors, that we could take the message to the people who we see and love and know and people we don't. God bless us today. Thank you so much for your son Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen.